Hi. Today we're going to be talking about something called the Casimir Effect. The Casimir Effect is a force that occurs between two parallel plates in a vacuum that pushes them together even without any external force present. It comes about due to the fact that quantum vacuum fluctuations, which I will explain later on in the video, create an area of negative energy density between the two plates, and that's what pushes them together. Now, I originally found out about this because I watched a video by Kurzgesagt in which he talks about how you could use negative mass or negative energy density to open a wormhole. He says something like, we already have a candidate for this exotic matter, the vacuum of space itself. We may even have a candidate for this exotic matter, the vacuum of space itself. Quantum fluctuations in empty space are constantly creating pairs of particles and antiparticles, only for them to be annihilated an instant later. The vacuum of space is boiling with them, and we can already manipulate them to produce an effect similar to the negative mass we're looking for. So this raises the interesting question, how can a vacuum have any energy density at all, positive or negative? Surely there's nothing there, so there isn't any energy for there to be an energy density of. Well, the answer lies in Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. In quantum mechanics, the uncertainty principle tells us that whenever we make a measurement of a particle's position and momentum, there is always some uncertainty in the measurements of both. And when we multiply those two uncertainties together, we get a number which is greater than or equal to h bar over 2, where h bar is the Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. From this, we can derive a corresponding uncertainty principle for energy and time which tells us that when we make measurements of the energy of a particle or waves in some field, like the electromagnetic field, for a given time, there is always an uncertainty in the energy measurement that we make. So if we measure the energy of a vacuum somewhere out beyond any galaxies, and we think we've measured zero, then there was some uncertainty in that measurement. Therefore, it's possible that there was some energy in that vacuum, and therefore, if it was the electromagnetic field, for instance, there could be some waves propagating through that field that we didn't measure. These waves in the vacuum, which have energy which we're unable to measure, are known as quantum vacuum fluctuations. And we know in physics that the energy of a wave corresponds to its frequency. So therefore, these quantum vacuum fluctuations have the usual properties of a wave, frequency and wavelength. So between the two plates, The waves have to go to zero at the boundary, as in where the two plates are, because the plates are uncharged, therefore there must be no electric field there. In the electromagnetic field, if a wave goes to zero, then it's got zero electric field, so that fits the definition. Now, given that the wave goes to zero at the boundary, this means that the waves in between the two plates have to have wavelengths which are a fraction of the distance between them. So there are, is a discrete set of possible frequencies of vacuum fluctuations that we can find or calculate to be there between the two plates. However, outside the plates, this condition isn't there. So the waves there could have any frequency at all. I'll draw a diagram to make this a bit clearer. Basically what we're saying is, between the two plates, as the waves have to go to zero at the boundary, the wave can either look like that, where it has a wavelength which is twice the distance, or it could look like that, where the wavelength is equal to the distance, or it could look like that, for instance, where the wavelength is a half of the distance between the plates. But it couldn't look like that, because that wouldn't go to zero at the boundary. So most of the waves which you could find in a vacuum can't actually exist between the two plates but they can exist outside. And given that each of those waves has a corresponding energy, the energy of course corresponds to its frequency or wavelength, this means that the total energy of the fluctuations between the two plates is actually less than the total energy outside. This results in the space between the two plates having a negative energy density in relation to the vacuum outside, which we're defining to have zero energy. And then, given that there is a greater total energy outside the plates than inside, this results in a force which pushes the two plates together. Now, Casimir originally predicted this force in 1948, 
And since then, it has actually been measured. If you take two uncharged parallel plates, place them close together but apart in a vacuum, then we have actually measured a force between the two plates which pushes them together. So in this short series, I'm going to go over Casimir's original derivation, perhaps a few other derivations as well, and then compare that to the experimental results of the force which we have measured. I'm then going to go over some interpretations of this effect. Is there really a negative energy density between the two plates, or does it just appear that there is? So I hope you've understood my brief explanation, and I hope you enjoy this series. Thank you for watching.